guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about how I got an A star in my EPQ. And for those of you that don't know, an EPQ is an extended project qualification. It's something that a lot of students in the UK take alongside their A-levels at college. I did mine halfway through year 12 to the beginning of year 13 and I wrote mine about a human cytomegalovirus and I'm going to tell you all of the things I did to get an A-star and how I scored a really good grade. And as always, make sure to comment down below if you have any questions, I'm always here to help. So let's get on with the video. I'm going to record my screen so you guys can see the like process I went through. So we'll start with the contents page. On my contents page, this is basically the first thing that the examiners see when I hand in my EPQ, and it just shows them everything I've got basically and where they can find it, because I, num I numbered everything in this file so they could quite easily figure out what it was they were looking at, because there's quite a few things in there. The first thing I had in there was my actual completed dissertation, the fourth draft, it's got graphs in it. The second thing was my project progression record, and that's like a record of my aims and objectives from doing the EPQ and how I felt I was achieving them each time. So I think I had a pre-project review, mid-project review and a post-project review. Um, I have a mind map of my topics and ideas, I've got plans, short-term, long-term, reflective diary, like practice presentation, because at the end of your dissertation or project, you can present it to a group. I've got my primary research, my secondary research, everything I've possibly ever had about my EPQ is in this folder, including all my drafts as well. I think I did four drafts in total and then my evaluation. So I will show you all of those things. So we'll start, we won't start with dissertation, start with the project progression record. So basically this is a big document where, as I've said, I had like a pre-project review, a mid-project review and a post-project review. And I have to tell the examiner what it is I wanna get out of doing my PQ. So my rationale, my aims and objectives, um, why I chose the title I chose, how am I gonna achieve all of my aims and goals, so here we've got a question, how will you plan to bring your project in for the deadline? You should create a timeline. So I talked about the different types of timeline I used. My mid project review was kind of a reflective diary about like how well am I doing in meeting my outcomes? Where could I do better? Am I still on track? And you get your supervisor to sign it all off and hand it in. Then the next document I had was my initial title planning ideas. So this was a mind map where basically before I even picked that I was gonna do the human cytomegalovirus as my topic, I wasn't too sure where I wanted to go with my BQ because it's a very personal thing as the kind of the clues in the title it's an extended project qualification so it's extended it's beyond your studies it's kind of unique to you it's not something that everyone's taught so I had to write down my motivations my the skills I wanted to gain what I'm interested in and my hobbies so I'm interested in medicine yoga genetics ethics and wellness and my aspirations and career aims like I don't want to make it related to medicine so I kind of tied all of that together and then I had this five point summary of ideas and at the time, I don't think I had anything on the human cytomegalovirus, but basically I knew I wanted to do something sciencey. So I was Googling like current science research, I was Googling current science research and the human cytomegalovirus came up as something that they've been looking into at Cambridge. So I clicked on it and it turns out that 60% of people having human cytomegalovirus don't know they've got it. And it's fine because it's like perfectly fine to live with. That's why people don't know they have it. Unless you're immunocompromised, in which case it could kill you. So I thought, well, this could be quite bad if we all start taking immunosuppressants and we all have chemotherapy and transplants and that kind of thing. So I thought, well, I might pick that. So I ranked all of my, I came up with the different ideas and then I ranked them on this spreadsheet. So I had all of my topic ideas and I had six in the end and I ranked them in terms of one to five. Were they specific titles? I mean, how specific were they to science? What I wanted to go into? Was I passionate about them? What, like how much resources were there? So if I wanted to do primary re research and secondary research, how many other scientific papers have been written about it? Is it relevant to today? Like, what's the point of me learning this if no one cares? And how much does the world know about human cytomegalovirus? Like, how much research has there been done? So I added all of that up, and as you can see, with a grand total of 19 points, human cytomegalovirus, or, or the title, how much of a threat is HCMV to the health of the UK's population, and what might the future treatment options be? That was the title I ended up going with. So once I settled on the title, I then did a mind map about how I was gonna use that title to reach the goals of my EPQ. So how was I gonna work that into presenting, planning, research? What topics was I gonna cover in my EPQ, in my dissertation? And so I put all of that in this really funky, like a little um, mind map. Okay, so then in terms of the first thing you gotta do is plan, like you can't start without planning. So the idea is that with the EPQ, you plan in a way you've never planned before. Like you don't really, I mean, you plan to do revision, but you don't have to do it in this much depth. This is a six month ongoing project. It takes, well, for me, it was January, uh, June to December. 
So you've got to plan that time and have a schedule for what you want to do when. So I used these new methods of planning and it's really good to document those in your EPQ because as many the more methods you do, the more points you'll get for learning new techniques. So the first one I did was a scan chart and basically that's where you have every single day in the six month window, like labeled up here at the top. So I've got like September, October, November, December. And then you have these columns where you can color code and block out the periods in which you want to do certain things. So my reflective diary was a very ongoing project and that's where you can see it go like start, start to finish the reflective diary is there. Whereas kind of the first review of my personal project reflection is only right in the beginning of June. My initial ideas were three days in the beginning of June, short term plans kind of ongoing and changing all the time. A mind map of the project, I wanted that done by the end of June, long term plan. And then the kind of got into the research element, like the secondary analysis going on middle of the summer holidays. And then I think the green must be, oh, the green is my note taking and my dissertation writing. Yeah, so my dissertation writing, I wanted to get that done by end of October time and then presentation. So that's all what the Gantt chart's for. And then obviously it's really good to include that you've got other considerations going on. So I have my EPQ to think about, my work experience week, my mum's birthday, we were going on holiday. So I put all of that in there as well because it's really good to show your plan is realistic because there's no point being like, yeah, I'm gonna do 10 hours of EPQ a day when you've got other stuff going on. So that was that column. And then I was doing these short-term plans as well. So Eisenhower Grid is basically a plan I made every week where I wanted to document I was going to make sure I achieved my goals for that week. So for week two, the week of the 24th of June 2019, I split my prior my like things up into different priorities. So I had important and urgent, important but not urgent, not important and not urgent, that kind of thing. So UCAT was obviously a thing I was doing at the moment, but it wasn't, well apparently I said it wasn't important, but it was urgent. I'm not really sure how that works, but that's what I said. Um, so those are eyes and how grids and I had one for every week. So yeah, there's 26 in total, about half a year. And then, oh yeah, I had, I planned it on my Google calendar as well. So I just put everything in there. So you can see I would do half, I do half the day BMAP or homework and then half the day EPQ pretty much. And then I had this reflective diary. This is basically a diary entry that you keep going the whole time. So I started it on the 12th of June and how many ridiculous number of pages this document is probably. 18 pages long diary entry, all the way from the middle of June to the middle of December, 10th of December, I've completed my PPR final section. So yeah, very happy to have finished the diary entry. I must have done source analysis. That's the next important thing. So in terms of actually writing my PQ, the thing that came in most handy was this source analysis table. So I would Google papers to do with HCMV. I had a rough idea of what I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about immu immunosuppressants, cancer, diabetes, heart conditions, and the impact this would have on cytomegalovirus and the risk. So I found all of these papers and I think I had 16 in total that I was quoting, 16 or 17, 16. And I planned what I was going to talk about in my APU in three sections. So I would colour coordinate which section this source was going to be in. So this source, source one was going to be in section one. Um, source three was going to be in sections two and three and all of that kind of thing. So I planned that all in here. And these columns were outlining the content of the source, why it was useful, why it was relevant to my EPQ and which part of the source was the useful part. Cause some of these documents were pages long and you don't wanna be sifting through all of that. So I just said like, for example, source five, I'm gonna use chapter one to four and um, for source six, I'm gonna use the abstract only. And then also I made like a full on referencing system. So I used the Harvard referencing system and I would put my reference in here. So I didn't need to have to do that when I was actually trying to write the EBQ, I'd already got that sorted. So that was that. Then I had actually doing the note-taking. So I used this thing called the Cornell note-taking method. So I used that for most of the sources, apart from the ones that were just images or graphs. But basically I would read through the source, find relevant information, jot it down here as a quote, and then summarize it, like the things, how it was relevant to my theme. And then I would do a final summary of my findings from that source down the bottom. And then, yeah, once I'd finished with the source, I would put it back into that table that I showed you a minute ago. So I had 16 of them. Then I did primary research, which is basically doing, I interviewed first, I did two things. I interviewed my GP, and then I did a questionnaire of my family and friends. So I interviewed my GP and asked her about human cytomegalovirus. I, and then I, at the beginning of this document, I told, I told the examiner like why I wanted to speak to the GP, what I thought the benefit of that was. And then I did a quick summary, kind of a transcript of the conversations I asked her and what her answers were. And then, yeah, I did a questionnaire. So that's what you can see in this in this folder. So here is the actual questionnaire. 
but it was about asking people if they knew anyone who was at risk of HCMV basically to try and figure out if it is actually a threat to, because that's the question of my APU, how much of a threat is it? So I wanted to know if people knew anything about HCMV, if they knew anything about the risk of it, if you've had um, COPD, a stroke, like liver damage, anything that puts you at risk of a transplant basically or cancer. And once I'd done all my research, I came up with this plan as to how I was going to actually include it in my um, EPQ. So I had this document where I basically linked all of my sources together. So I said, okay, in section 2.3 of my dissertation, I want to answer the question, what could transplants and chemotherapy mean for our risk of HCMV? And I was going to use sources 8, 12 and 13. And I talked about what each of those sources did for me in terms of that section. And I came up with this idea of connecting sources, extending them ideas on a wider like basis and then challenging the concepts within them so if there were any differences between sources or like conflicting ideas from medics or healthcare professionals I would put that in there as well so I did that for every single section I made sure I included my primary sources so in section 2.2 I talked about my interview with my GP and all of that so I put that all in this document so I knew exactly when it came to writing my PQ what I was going to put in each section so that was quite straightforward once I'd done that, I then made a final flow chart deciding like, OK, this is what the structure of my EPQ dissertation is going to look like. I'm going to have a title. I'm going to have an abstract. I'm going to have the main body and I'm going to split that into three sections. And then I'm going to have a conclusion and a bibliography. So once that was done, I then did some writing. Finally, in the summer holidays, I wrote my EPQ. So I had my dissertation, uh, the first draft. Well, for those of you that don't actually know, you can either write a dissertation of about 5,000 words or you can make make something. So you can, make, some guy made a car in my year, like he did a car, he made a go-kart or something really cool, I don't know. And then he did a 2,000 word piece to accompany that. So that's what you can do. So I did the 5,000 word dissertation, but of course my first draft was 9,229 words. In, in that does include the bibliography, but the bibliography I'll show you guys, it's just at the bottom here. It's only two pages. So the majority of that was words from the writing. So I had to cut some of that down, but having looked at my last draft, my third draft, I think I only got it down. <laughs> I only cut out about a thousand words. I got it down to about 8,000 words. So that was the final draft pretty much. And then once I'd written it, time to present my findings. So we have to do a presentation. You've got to work on public speaking skills with your EPQ as well. Um, it's literally an all around package, the EPQ. You've got to do everything. So I did some planning for my presentation. So I had this document here where I said what I wanted to include, why I wanted to do the presentation the way I wanted to do it, because you could either do like a poster display where you would put your EPQ on like a board and show people at a talk, or you could do a presentation to an audience. So I, I chose to do that and I said why I did that. Was I going to use cue cards? How was I going to do it? Was I going to do a PowerPoint, Keynote, Canva, Prezi? So I put that all in this document too. And then I came up with these three different plans. So I had different different forms of a slideshow. Basically all said the same thing, just in a different way. This one was very blue and navy, kind of boring. So then I thought oh, I'll make one a bit more fun. So I went for this one, which was like almost sensory overload. And then I muted it down again. I went with a cool mustard yellow, which I didn't really like. So I ended up picking the very, very bright one. And yeah, as I did with my titles, I ranked the PowerPoints and kind of justified why I picked the one I picked. So I said the pink and blue one was colourful, informative, clear, fun, engaging. So it scored the highest. So I ended up picking it. Then once I did that, I made sure that I gathered some feedback for my actual presentation, because the whole idea about the EPQ is that you're gaining skills from it. And the best way to do that is to reflect on what you're doing. So I filled, I got the audience to fill in this feedback form. And once they filled that in, I then compiled all of their feedback into this document I basically summarized my findings from from that and said what what improvements I would have made had I learned anything from the process and um, just to show the examiners that I knew what I was doing and then here is a lovely video of me presenting which I'm not going to show you because it's really cringy but yeah it's there if you want to see um just to prove to you that I did present but yeah it's very cringy and then I evaluated everything. So I had this evaluation document. I talked about the research process, my final outcome, how I got the word limit down. I think in the end, actually, I must've got it down even further to just over 7,000 words, but it's still a little bit over the 5,000 word limit. The presentation, the skills I've gained, all these transferable skills, um, just to show the examiner that I really like EPQ was worth my while and I made the most of it because at the end of the day, you basically want to show the examiner that you worked really hard. So that was what this document was for. And then just to really hammer it home to the examiner, I basically made this document where I had the assessment criteria. So 
AO1 uh, was about management and planning. So AO is assessment objective, assessment objective one. This document was saying how I had done these things in my project. What, what was the evidence that I had used resources well or been organized and met my deadlines. So I basically filled that in and said, look, this is what I did and here's the evidence, here's the proof. So that was this document. And I hope that was the kind of thing that would get me a really good grade. Yeah, that was basically my EPQ. So as you can see, if I go back to my contents page, it really was quite a hefty project. It did take me six months, but I paced myself and I did pretty much stick to the, the Gantt chart I showed you where I had this scale from start to finish of what I wanted to get done. So I submitted it on the 11th of December. So it was pretty, yeah, it was a six month process from start to finish, but I think it was probably the best thing I did at college because I was in full control of the, the process. And from start to finish, it was, totally up to me how I divided my time, what I wanted to do. It was so much fun. Like I had the BMAT and the, and the UFAT to do in the meantime and revision and that's all kind of scripted. There's nothing you can choose what you want to do. But with the EPQ, it's 100% your own project and you take it and you do what you want to do with it. So EPQ is definitely a really worthwhile experience and it's quite, you know, it's not straightforward. Obviously you have to put in a lot of work to get a good grade, but if you do put in the work consistently and you pick a title that you enjoy and you're really genuinely interested in, then you'll probably come out with a good grade anyway. Yeah, it gets you UCAS points, it gets you places at uni. Some unis even lower the entrance requirement because you've done EPQ. So I know Southampton would have offered me AAB instead of AAA if I wanted to go there to study medicine as long as I had an A or an A star in APQ. But yeah, I got an A star in APQ. I never actually got the mark breakdown because I did my, I didn't, I didn't do exams in 2020, so the grades all came out in a weird way and things were different because of COVID, but um, I got an A star and this wasn't done on a teacher assessment grade. This was actually the genuine grade I got because I submitted this before the pandemic started. So I know I got an A, a star and that was the genuine grade I got. But if you have any questions about EPQ, please let me know. If you have any questions about doing biology, chemistry, maths, physics, A-level, please check out the Medical Collective website. We have a page on each of those A-levels and there's loads of good resources. Um, so be sure to use them because they are all free and obviously you've got to apply to medical school you've got to do well in your a levels and an epq is just another thing that you can do to get those grades up so best of luck to those of you that are taking an epq why don't you comment down below tell me what projects you're doing and if you've got any questions i'll do my best to answer them and help you but yeah i hope you enjoyed the video and i will see you all next time bye um 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 and then um